Hello everyone. I am Muhammad Islam from University of Texas at Arlington, and I will present our work titled Your Noise, My Signal, Exploiting Switching Noise for Stealthy Data Exfiltration from Desktop Computers. This is a joint work with Jiwi Shao and my PhD advisor, Shaoli Ren from UC Riverside. This is a paper on security, and we will see how unwanted electrical noises from computer power supplies can be exploited to transfer stolen data from secure system without using the network. The valuable and private information stored in computers have always been a prime target for malware attacks, and they are not showing any sign of slowing down with millions of new malware released every month. It has become particularly troublesome for enterprises with the recent explosion of ransomware type attacks. To defend enterprises from this onslaught of malware attacks, a proactive approach is to have strict control and monitoring of all network traffic going in and out of the enterprise network to the outside networks. And this can go as far as completely disconnecting the network by removing all physical connectivity to outside network, also known as air gapping the system. Unfortunately, however, even when the network restrictions and air gapping work 100% of the time, malwares still manage to find their way into these systems. For example, malwares can get into this secure system through the supply chain. A recent example of such incident is the discovery of microchip implants on supermicro server motherboard. Malware can get in through hardware software backdoors as well planted during manufacturing or development by insiders or even by unsuspecting employees who fell victim to an attack. And the portable drives will remain a major way malwares find their way into the secure system. These are only a few examples of how these malwares can get into the system while there are many other ways. Nonetheless, getting the stolen data out of a secure system remains challenging. Getting into the system or the infiltration can be a one-time thing. However, sending back the stolen information back to an attacker or the exfiltration needs to be done over a longer time. The ways malware can get into a secure system may not be suitable for getting the data out. For example, it is very unlikely that a portable drive will find its way back to the attacker. Exfiltration from secured system is particularly hard since they cannot use the network to send back the data. We are looking for the answer to the question how to send data without using the network. Infecting systems with malwares and gathering and stealing sensitive information remain active research areas. However, in this work, we focus on data exfiltration. Let's come back to our enterprise networks with strict network monitoring and control. To get stolen data out of this network, an attacker can use the target computer as a transmitter that directly sends the data to him or her. The key idea is to embed the stolen information onto an externally observable physical property, such as the heat generated by the computer. An attacker then extract the stolen information by placing a receiver designed to track the changes of the observable physical property. In doing so, the attacker can bypass the network and still get the data out of the system. Stealthiness is a very important aspect for extracting data in such a way. Both the transmitter and receiver should not behave suspiciously. And another aspect of the stealthiness is the proximity of the receiver to the transmitter computer. Ideally, an attacker would like to stay as far as possible while still be able to extract the data. While high data rate is also desirable, we do not expect the makeshift transmitter to reach the data rate of any communication device. Several recent studies demonstrate that the computer fan noise, the heat generated by CPU, status LEDs of system and hard drives, even the electromagnetic radiation due to electrons moving through CPU or motherboard wiring can be utilized as externally observable property to send data. And they enjoy different degrees of stealthiness and data rate. For instance, fan noise and heat require the receiver 
to be in the same room as the transmitter computer. While the status LED requires direct line of sight. On the other hand, electromagnetic radiation suffers from strong interference from other signals and is affected by metal casing commonly used in computers. In our approach, we use the power network and transmit the stolen information by varying the computer power consumption. To receive the information, we use voltage measurements at another outlet without the, within the same power network. We extract the power variation of the transmitter computer from the voltage measurement and thereby receive the data sent by the transmitter. Like all prior work focusing on the data exfiltration from secure system, in our third model, we consider the transmitter is infected with malware that can gather and steal sensitive data. We also consider the malware can modulate the power consumption of the computer by running CPU intensive workload. However, we do not consider any special execution privilege for the malware. As for the receiver, we consider it is connected to any power outlet within the same power network. When we say same power network, we mean both outlets have a common distribution point without any transformers in between. We also consider the transmitter is equipped with an analog to digital converter that can sample the voltage reading from its outlet. Instead of using traditional power meter, we use voltage measurements for extracting the power consumption information. We do, do it to overcome two very important limitations of prior work that use power consumption for data exfiltration. First, traditional power metering requires placement of a sensor on the path of the current flow. This can be a sensing register placed directly on the current path or a sensing coil to sense the magnetic field generated by the current. The sensor placement requires physically tampering with the power cable or the outlet of the transmitter. Second, the placement of the meter also needs to be targeted to sense the power consumption of the transmitter. A power sensor placed at a higher level will sense the sum of power consumption of all other outlets. Sensor placement at a different branch will also be completely useless in detecting the transmitting power. In contrast, we use voltage measurement, which does not require any physical tampering, and it can be collected from any other outlet within the same power network. Hence, our approach significantly boosts the stealthiness of the exfiltration over previous work. To utilize the voltage measurement for sensing the power, we exploit the power factor correction or the PFC circuits in computer power supply units. The PFC improves the power quality by shaping the power consumption to match the input sinusoidal voltage. To do that, the PFC circuit uses a rapid switching, which in turn create current ripples. The current ripples flows through the power network result and results in voltage ripples that spreads throughout the power network. Please check our paper to know further about how the ripples are created and how they travel through the network. If we connect a computer to an outlet and measure the voltage at another outlet using an ADC, we can capture the voltage ripples created by the PFC circuit. If we then perform frequency analysis on the voltage reading, we will see the frequency spike created by the PFC circuit at its switching frequency. The PFC switching frequency can be different for different power supply units based on their design. Even power supply produced from same batch can have different switching frequency due to manufacturing process variations. This variation in switching frequencies is what enables us to detect and use the PFC switching of a specific transmitter computer to send data without interfering, interference from other. To test our approach of using the PFC switching noise for data transmission, we place a transmitter and a receiver in a lab 50 feet, 55 feet away from each other and connected to different outlets. We vary the CPU load of transmitter computer following a 1-0 bit pattern where the high CPU load is 1 and the low CPU load is 0. The frequency analysis of the voltage samples collected by the ADC shows the frequency spike created by the transmitter. 
we see many other frequency spikes that are caused by other computers in the lab. The frequency spectrum diagram, on the other hand, shows the variation of the spikes as we change the transmitter's power consumption. We can clearly see the difference between low and high power in the spectrum. While we do the frequency analysis for our understanding, it is not required for data exfiltration. By simply using a band pass filter on the extracted voltage with a pass band around the switching frequency, we can get the power consumption pattern of the transmitter. The details of an end-to-end -end solution with data framing, with pilot sequence, and the PFC switching frequency detection is discussed in the paper. And due to differences in the PFC switching frequencies among different power supplies, we can use a single receiver to work with multiple transmitters. All we have to do is use different bandpass filters for different transmitters. Since we implemented the filter in software, there is no extra work other than running multiple detection processes in parallel. Here we show an example of four transmitter computers sending data simultaneously. We see that transmission, transmitter one, two, three have switching frequencies close, close to each other, while transmitter four's switching frequency is a little bit farther away. Nonetheless, we can clearly see and identify each of their transmission. Another important aspect of the data exfiltration is the achievable data transfer rate. To understand the limit of data transmission using our approach, we first look at the symbol rate. The symbol rate is determined by how quickly we can alter the power consumption of a computer. Our experiment with a sudden CPU load change reveals that the power change lags the CPU change by nearly 33 milliseconds or two full power cycles at 60 hertz. This limits our symbol rate to 30 symbols per second. We then test our we then test how many bits we can fit in each symbol. This requires that we can clearly identify the power levels corresponding to each symbol. However, our experiment with two bits per symbol, which require four distinct power levels, reveals that we cannot identify the required four power levels even when we use a symbol length of 66 milliseconds, which is twice as much as the, our default 30 millisecond rate. Hence, we resort to one bit per symbol. Combining these two observations, we identify that the maximum bit rate achievable for a single transmitter receiver pair is 30 bits per second. Now we show a demo of our approach in action. In this demo, we have the transmitter in one room and the receiver in a separate room, almost 90 feet away. We have the data exploitation experiment with almost every computer we could get our hands on. We have tested with seven different computers from vendors like Dell, Acer, App, and Apple. 
We have also tested with two custom built computers with power supply units from Corsair and EVG. Our tests span Windows system, Ubuntu system, Ubuntu server system, and Mac OS. As the test locations, we use three different labs and an office in two different buildings with the transmitter and receiver placed at various distances. And our results show very low rate, error rate in transmission. Due to the use of pilot bits, our maximum bit rate with no error is 28.48 bits per second. We get the best results with the Dell computers, while the iMac required us to increase the symbol length to have successful transmission. Nonetheless, the bit rates or the bit error rates in our experiments are well within the range of error connection codes for effective data transfer. Next, we test our data transmission with various background applications running in the transmitter. We also run tests with different settings, such as how many cores are used for power modulation and the length of the pilot. Regardless of the different settings or the background scenarios, we see low error rates showing how effectively we can send data using our approach. As a defense against our approach, there could be several different strategies implemented. One way is to redesign the power supplies to eliminate the switching noise altogether. However, power factor correction is a mature design and will require significant effort from the industry. Alternatively, we can prevent the switching noise to get into the power network by connecting computers using UPSs or power line filters. However, small UPSs for individual computers typically directly bypasses the power connection and therefore does not block the PFC switching noise. Power line filters, on the other hand, can mainly attenuate the noise and still can be explo exploited for data exfiltration. A software-based defense approach can be to randomize the computer power consumption at all time by randomly changing the CPU load and frequency scaling. The randomness in power consumption will make the malware impossible to embed information in power variation. However, this approach will create power overhead and performance impact for other legitimate applications. We have discussed these defenses with results in our paper, and we urge you to check it out for more details. The key takeaway from this talk is that the unwanted electrical noises can be used as transmission signal by an attacker to secretly extract data from a secure system. Here, we talked about our novel approach that exploits this noise and extract power from stealthy voltage measurements only. This allows an attacker to place its receiver anywhere within the power network and also can simultaneously send data from multiple transmitters to a single receiver. We regret that we could not present our work in person, uh, but if you have any question or comment regarding our work, please contact any one of us. Thank you.